In this chapter, we'll explore the new harmonization and intelligent composing assistance tools in Cubase 8. The chord track allows you to build musical progressions by creating chord events. Chord events don't generate any sound, instead they control or transpose playback on MIDI, instrument, and audio tracks. Let's start by creating an instrument track using the project menu and the add track command. Next, we'll use the same menu sequence to create a chord track. To create a new chord event, select the pencil tool and click on the chord track everywhere you want a new chord to start. Let's add several. Since these new chords are undefined, their name is shown as an X. You select the beginning position of the chord and it plays until the next chord. To edit a chord, take the selection tool and double click the chord event you want to edit. This window has two tabs, Editor and Chord Assistant. Use the Editor tab to select at least a root and type. Chord events can also have a tension and a bass note for more complexity. The notes which make up the chord are shown on the MIDI keyboard at the bottom. And you can use this icon in the corner to add a new chord event without leaving the editor. Then select the new chord's root, type, and tension. Click anywhere outside the window to close it. To hear what the chord track event sounds like, make sure that the Audition Chords button is active and that the target track is selected in the drop-down menu. You can click on a chord to hear it. Or you can start playback to hear them in order. The buttons at the bottom of the chord track are used to resolve display conflicts by resizing and to show scales. We'll discuss scales in just a minute. The Chord Assistant can help you come up with new musical ideas. Double click an empty chord event, switch to the Chord Assistant tab, and move the complexity slider to the right to generate more sophisticated options, which are shown in the results pane. Click on the results pane to hear what they sound like. Then double click on the next empty chord event and continue. Now let's play this from the start. There are many more options available. Let's create an empty chord event between two other chords and double click on it to open the chord assistant. And again, set the complexity around three. The icon to the right of the complexity slider controls the gap mode. Gap mode controls how the chord assistant makes its suggestions. And it can be set to analyze only the chord before the gap, or it can be set to analyze the chords before and after. At the very bottom are the controls for the mode and type of chord progression. These controls also configure how the chord assistant decides which chords are recommended. If you select Cadence, chord assistant will recommend chords based on how they fit into several familiar patterns of progressions. For example, a classic blues progression is the 1-4-5 pattern. Cadence is useful if you're trying to create within a specific musical style. Click on the gear icon to configure your complexity filters. The further right you move the complexity slider, the more of these options are enabled. For example, you can choose the option to substitute source chord. This would allow the chord advisor to use C major or its relative chord, A minor. By comparison, in the common notes mode, the chord advisor bases its suggestions on the number of notes that you want to stay the same from chord to chord. In Common Notes mode, the gear icon gives us different options. 
You can click and drag chord events using standard techniques, and they'll respond to the snap function if you have snap enabled. Remember that their duration is determined by when the next chord event occurs. The chord track inspector is a little different from the other inspectors. One of the most important controls is the Audition Chords button, which must be active to hear the output of the chord track. The mute, time base, and lock controls are the same as other inspectors. Next is the Voicings menu. A chord's voicing describes which pitches are used to create it. A C major chord is made up of at least the notes C, E, and G, but those notes might be played one way on a piano and a different way on a guitar. The different arrangements of the notes is called the voicing. You can also have different voicings on the same instrument. For example, that same C major chord could be voiced as a triad. And the Chord Track Inspector gives you control of all these variables. The first drop-down menu lets you select piano voicing, guitar voicing, or basic. The second drop-down menu lets you adjust the structure of the chord Let's listen to this chord progression in the piano voicing. Now let's change to the guitar voicing. And let's also call up a guitar sound with a picking performance style and listen again. The structure of a chord depends on the musical scale it's associated with. You can click on the scale events and hear the scale for each chord. You can also select the pencil tool and create new scale events before you construct the chord events. This will cause the chord to be forced into that specific scale. This is useful when composing for a specific style or musical genre. You can see there are a wide variety of scales to choose from. You can make other tracks follow the structure of your chord track. When you add a chord track to a project, a chord track tab is added to the inspector of every track in the project. You can use this to make the track follow the chord track. To show how this works, I'm going to record a basic triad over and over again. It won't fit with the existing chords at all. Now I'll enable Follow Chord Track. Now listen. And you can do this in real time while you play if you want to. You can transform chords into MIDI notes by simply dragging the chord event to a MIDI or instrument track. You can assign a chord progression to the quarter MIDI insert or to the pads on Halion Sonic SE. Let's create two instrument tracks and create instances of Halion Sonic SE for each. To keep things simple, I'll set each of these instruments to piano sounds. On the first of our new instruments, open the MIDI insert section of the inspector. Click in the insert slot to open the MIDI effects pop up menu and select the quarter. The effect is automatically activated and its control panel opens. If you haven't played with this before, Quarter lets you create chords then trigger them from a single key. Open the drop down menu at the top, pick a style and a chord, and you can see the notes required for this chord appear on the quarter pane. But now you can create these chords from the chord track too. I'll cycle the Learn button to reset Quarter. Now all you have to do is drag chord events from the chord track to the quarter panel. The first chord event is mapped to the drop position, and all subsequent chord events are mapped chromatically. And if I set quarter to accept multiple layers, you can select up to eight chord events at once, 
and drag them all onto the quarter panel. Chords with more than one occurrence are only assigned once. Hit the corresponding keys on your MIDI keyboard to play back the chords. You can also drag and drop chord events to the pads in Halion Sonic SE. Open up the instrument editor for the second instance of Halion Sonic SE. Select a chord event and drag it to one of the Halion Sonic SE pads and click the pad to hear it. You can also grab up to eight chord events at once and drag them to the first pad. The first chord event is mapped to the pad where you dropped it and all subsequent chord events are mapped to other pads. Click the corresponding keys on the Halion Sonic SE keyboard to trigger them. Now let's move on to the next chapter and see how Hermode tuning can help make all of these great chords sound even better.